Welcome back to WIS News Prime Time. December is Seasonal Affective Disorder Awareness Month, which aims to bring awareness to a condition that causes people to experience a serious mood change when the seasons change. SAD, or SAD as it's known, has the ability to take a unique toll on law enforcement officers. And the holidays, of course, can bring additional emotions to responding officers on top of the usual mental toll that the job can typically take. Well, here to shine a light on officer mental health throughout the holiday season. Let's welcome RCSD's Director of Wellness and Resiliency, Allison Farrell, back to the studio. Thank you so much for joining us and thank you so much for all of the work that you do thank you. with RCSD. And it is an important topic to address because so many in the law enforcement community, they face unique challenges that can really kind of expose them a little bit to having some distress this time of year and all year. That's true, that's true. I think that the the culture of law enforcement historically has been not to have discussions around mental health and to kind of squash it down. Uh, luckily, our sheriff, Leon Lott, is doing really good work to bring that conversation to the table and make sure that our folks really have everything that they need. Uh, this time of year, we talked about that, is, is particularly tough for everyone, and especially, I think, first responders and law enforcement because of shift work and not being able to have access to their families uh, consistently, so it can be a hard time of year. It's tough, and I think, you know, what they're exposed to on a daily basis, some of the things that they see on the job and that they experience, uh, talk a little bit about how that impacts them and what you're seeing at least from your front row seat with some of the yeah sure so our you know our folks get out there and they go every day to the 911 calls they come across people on their hardest days um, on some of their worst days and and they're there to help them and support them through it whether or not it's a loss of life or a crime um, so they, they are exposed to things. I always tell people that your mother did not raise you to see that, right? It's not, it's not the way that, that we necessarily raise our children. It's not a skill set. Mm -hmm. uh, so they either come by it naturally or we have to teach them how to be resilient and how to have conversations around that, how to identify their needs, how to uh, tell people and to speak up when they're not okay, you know, that it's, it's okay to not be okay and how to have those conversations. Yeah, you know, because I think when it comes to first responders and law enforcement, they're so used to helping everyone else. They are. Uh, uh, that it's tough to kind of speak up for yourself, but that's so that's so huge. Some of the resources that you have uh, to help officers through difficult times include a, a therapy dog. Yeah, it does, so we have a crisis intervention dog named CJ, who is uh, one of our PALS dogs, Palmetto Animal Assisted Life Services. He came to us about two months ago, I'm his handler, and he's been quite uh, the hit at the sheriff's <laughs> department. <laughs> yes, what is it about a dog that just allows, I would say, uh, it just kind of puts people in a better space, a better mood. What is it uh, just about that presence of a dog? So I think America loves dogs, yeah. right? We, we love dogs right now. Also too, it's a conduit for conversation. It's a way for people maybe that wouldn't necessarily reach out for help to be able to come in and talk with me and hang out with the dog and then conversations can, can happen naturally about what they may need. So I think a dog, it's, a, it's been a real strong thing for us to have in our department. Yeah, so seasonal affective disorder. Let's talk a little bit about that. You know, when the weather changes or you have a gray day like today mm -hmm. or just rain for a period of time. I know, especially up north in colder climates, it's, it's a real thing and very acute. Uh, what are some of the signs to be looking out for and what are some of the things that people can do to kind of help cope with that? Yeah, so it's, it's thought to be uh, a result of a change or a difference in exposure to light, essentially, yeah. right? So, so winter days. So the best thing they can do a lot of times is get outside, get outside, have conversations, connect with people, make sure that your schedule, if you need to tweak that in order to be more outside and to be more active, also to make sure that you're accessing resources that, that are available to you should you become depressed and, and in a funk, because it's, it's easy to happen, especially like you said on days like today. Yeah, well, one thing that is nice about South Carolina is if the weather's bad for a couple of days, Rest assured, it's it's gonna get. It's sunny. gonna change. Yeah, that's right. Too long. There's that's, some hope there. It's always a, a wonderful thing. Yeah. Um, so you know, with all of the resources that are available, is it just really important, just kind of highlighting that help is available for anybody and that they shouldn't be afraid to speak up. I know we say that all the time. It is so important. Yes, yeah. and it's and it's available and it's accessible right now. Help is so 988 is our national suicide prevention lifeline. If someone were to be suicidal or have suicidal thoughts, we want to encourage people to reach out to. 988 741 741 is a text line that you can text and, and receive uh, support through text. So there are certainly resources. There's in person resources, there's virtual resources. 
there's help available. Yeah, well, Allison, thank you for all that you do and yeah, for all the help for that me. you provide uh, for our first responders. And thank you. We really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. You bet. All right. All right.